morning church great to have you at church can you believe it today is the last Sunday in October the 25th of October and today's a special day it's the Sunday before Halloween and uh, we're here today to give a message about the warfare that we're involved in if you have ever celebrated Halloween maybe you've never considered the roots of Halloween where does it come from should Christians actually be involved in Halloween? That's a very important question. We're going to be doing a warfare service today, and I'm pleased to announce that the Reverend Dr. Ed Hurd is going to be our guest preacher today here in our underground bunker church, and uh, his wife Janice is going to lead us in the prayers of the people. So today is a warfare service. We want to pray against the spirit of darkness, and we want to invite Jesus Christ into our service and into our lives and especially this week when many nefarious people are worshipping the devil during this Halloween season we're going to not concentrate on All Hallows Eve we're going to concentrate on the next day All Saints Day we're going to celebrate that and we're going to do some warfare today so welcome to our church uh, put your armour on because we're ready to fight the battle um, of the kingdom against the battle of darkness. And so uh, I'm going to ask you to please stand as we begin the service. And I say to you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Now listen to this call to worship. It comes from Psalm 143 verse 9. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord, for I hide myself in you. We need to be rescued from our enemies because we can't fight this battle on our own. We need the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. God the Father and God the Holy Spirit to help us in this battle, especially to give us discernment and wisdom as we, as we navigate this season of Halloween and maybe get distracted from Halloween from All Saints Day. We hide ourselves in him. He is our protection and he's the one that's going to rescue us from our enemies. Let's not blindly walk around this week <laughs> thinking that we don't really know what's going on in the spiritual world. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and minister to us today as we worship you and as we listen to Reverend Ed's sermon. So Jenny has chosen some warfare songs today. So uh, come and let's invite Jenny and uh, we're going to do some spiritual warfare in our music today. Come on, Jenny. Good morning. We uh, are going to start with A Mighty Fortress Is Our God, written by Martin Luther, and it's translated into what we sing as Old English, and you've got to know that it's talking about the devil, and it's talking about the man that's been uh, chosen, uh, which is Christ Jesus, to set us free. So that's the, that's the whole thing, and as you sing, may it come clear um, that we worship this mighty God who has given us a grand way of escape through the Lord Jesus. Amen. A mighty fortress is our God. and 
must ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is He.
you that all of history is your story, Lord. We praise you. And thank you that where your spirit is, there is freedom. That's the scripture. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. freedom. You bring freedom. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for doing that spiritual warfare. You know, the scripture says that the one who lives within us is greater than the one who lives in the world. You plus God is a majority. In fact, without you, God is still a majority. But we have won the battle. We just need to be careful as we walk around that we don't tread on landmines. So we need spiritual discernment. Well, thank you for singing and worshipping. Let's welcome our visitors. If you're a first time visitor, thank you for being at church. Maybe one day when we get together in a building, we'll actually meet you face to face. If you're a regular, 
Listen, I can't tell you how important it is to have you as part of our community. And especially this discipline of meeting every Sunday morning like this, now at 10.45 because of the restrictions on YouTube, but every Sunday morning we get together and worship together. You might even still be in your pyjamas having a cup of coffee, but we're together worshipping. Thank you for being here. I want to show you a couple of pictures uh, this week. As you know, last Saturday we had our men's breakfast. Hallelujah. And Nabil Abdullah came and uh, spoke to us about his ministry to refugees and immigrants. And of course, we can't show you photos about his ministry, uh, but we did get to meet Nabil's family. Here's a picture of Nabil with his family. Two of his kids were born here in Canada and they are experiencing Santa Claus. Here you can see last Christmas. This is uh, Nabil's wife, Miriam, and their eldest daughter, Gloria, who was born in Egypt, and Natalie and Samuel. They were both born here. So we thank God for Nabil and his family and his ministry and for his words to us last Saturday, which were really a great encouragement and challenge. Here's the second photo I want to show you, part of our church family, even though they live in Ontario now. And now this is Evangeline Stelpstra. She's now two months old. Can you believe that? I still remember praying for um, Matt and Grace that they would even get pregnant. And here is Evangeline, two months old. You can see this little message. She loves making ooh and ah sounds. And one of the things she loves to do is have a belly massage. Well, that might be for little babies to have a belly massage. Welcome to you, Evangeline. It's great to have you at church this Sunday, and God bless you. Well, uh, time for joy time now, and uh, we want to thank God for Christine, who's in Calgary, still doing joy, joy time with our children, and for Janice, and uh, for Elaine, and just a quick note, why don't you pray for Elaine's husband, Bruce? Uh, he's very sick, he's got pneumonia and he's in hospital now and he's getting medications and Lord willing, he'll be out of hospital soon. But pray for Uncle Bruce because he's quite sick and Elaine's been helping with the Sunday school while Uncle Bruce has been in hospital. But kids, you go and um, maybe when you do your exercises today that we sent you, pray for Uncle Bruce as well, will you? And maybe even pray for the Joy Time ladies that are helping us, Christine, Janice, and Elaine. Okay, time for our Bible reading. Uh, the scripture says that we should read the scripture out aloud. And here we are, we're reading from the Gospel of Luke, which... Uh, uh, Ed is going to be preaching from. So grab your Bibles. We're in, still in Luke chapter 10. And we're reading from the 17th verse to the 24th verse. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, uh, 
It's an honor to have Ed come and preach for us, but before he does, we've asked Cecile to come and lead us in prayer. And praise the Lord, Cecile is able to get onto Zoom, and we were able to record uh, a prayer over Zoom through her computer. So, Cecile, would you come and lead us in prayer as we pray for Ed's sermon? We welcome Ed. The title of his sermon is Trampling on Snakes and Scorpions at Halloween. And you may see this slide of the snakes and scorpions at Halloween as uh, Cecile comes to pray for us and then Ed will preach for us. And then after Ed's finished preaching, his wife Janice is going to lead us in the prayers of the people. So let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings to us. We thank you for our underground church, Lord. We bless our pastor, Ed, and Bishop Peter. And we ask that you open our collective hearts and ears as Pastor Ed brings us the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, greetings. Happy Halloween. Many people wonder what's so happy about Halloween? Halloween uh, originally means holy evening. Many people would question what modern Halloween has to do with being a holy evening. Bishop Peter and myself and many other Canadians went to an Anglican mission conference in Dallas, Texas in 2011. Everything in Texas is huge. The convention center was so big it held many conferences simultaneously. I wandered over to the other part of the convention center and I stumbled into, in January, mind you, a Halloween convention that was so large. It filled two football fields worth of Halloween merchandise. Absolutely amazing. When it comes to Halloween, you funny, you follow the money trail. And Halloween nowadays is big business. Have you noticed how every October Halloween stores pop up out of nowhere and by November they're no longer there. Now, many people think that Halloween is joyful, playful, and fun. And when they think of Jesus and church, they think of it as very serious and somber and deadly. Some people, they virtually confuse Jesus with C.S. Lewis's naughty character, Puddle Glum. You may remember that relentlessly pessimistic Marsh Wiggle. For joyless people, and they look at Jesus, they see him as just serious, stoic, and somber. They can't imagine Jesus laughing or rejoicing. And yet, Luke chapter 10 actually uses a very powerful Greek word talking about Jesus being full of joy, Jesus rejoicing. The recent chosen TV series, which I mentioned last week, it reminds us that Jesus is the most joyful person that's ever been on planet Earth. Where do you think joy came from? It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus 
was full of the Holy Spirit and therefore full of joy. Jesus is also the most playful person with the best sense of humor. And you see that in the Chosen TV series. No wonder Jesus, as the Bible teaches, was a friend of tax collectors and sinners hanging out with all the wrong people. You, you notice how the so-called religious didn't like him, but the ordinary people loved him. Here's my question from Luke chapter 10, verse 17. My question to you is, where do you get your joy from? Where do you become joyful? Many people in our modern culture, they, they try to find uh, joy almost like a quick fix to money, sex, or power. And often nowadays they're adding uh, alcohol and drugs to the mix. Now, money, sex, and power are not in themselves wrong if it's rooted in Jesus' kingdom. Everything has to be kingdom-centered. Jesus, remember, he sent the 72 out last week as lambs among wolves. And the amazing thing is they all made it back. If you were sent out among wolf packs, you know, you'd probably be amazed that you're still living, but they weren't just amazed, they were so joyful. And they were tempted, because, uh, you know, the 12 had already gone out, but the 72 represent us, and they were excited they could do the stuff too. And where were they tempted to get their joy from? They were tempted to get their joy from uh, seeing, being involved in deliverance and signs and wonders. We've seen at All Saints of the Earth signs and wonders and healings. But Jesus cautions, don't get your identity from these miracles. I'll never forget the indescribable joy of coming back from short-term mission trips in Honduras, Spokane, Uganda, and Rwanda. There's something about coming back from a mission trip. I want to ask you, have you ever been on a short-term mission trip? Raise your hand. It's unforgettable. But Jesus cautions you, don't get your identity from your mission trip. Jesus, he wants us to get our identity, our joy, that our names are written in heaven. Our joy is not from uh, what we do. Our joy is rather from what Jesus has done for us, especially in his death and resurrection. How many of you think it's a good idea to be humble? Raise your hands if you like to be more humble. Raise your hands if you think you're too humble and you need to cut back. Anybody? Humility is so powerful. Jesus is is actually teaching this passage about humility. Because you see, only the humble and the childlike are truly joyful. Now, we see in this passage many charismatic activities, signs and wonders. And being charismatic as an adjective as Bishop Peter teaches us, is a wonderful thing. 
but not as a noun. We don't want to get our identity from the charismatic gifts. Don't let the power of the Holy Spirit go to your head. I've sadly seen it many times in good people. You see, the spiritual gifts like prophecy and tongues, they are wonderful gifts when used in humility and love. But as 1 Corinthians 13 says, without love, they're just a bunch of noise. So Jesus is warning the 72, which means us, against pride and overconfidence. You see, pride was the very sin that caused Satan to be thrown out of heaven. We often don't realize that success is far more dangerous to most people than failure. And the 72 had been very successful. So Jesus, he mentioned them and he said, hold on, hold on. This is not where you get your joy. You see, when we're very successful, we may start thinking we can do it ourselves in our own strength and maybe we really don't need to be praying as much because we've kind of got it figured out and in some sense we may not admit it but we don't really think we need God's help. In the Oikos project if we don't put prayer first we're basically saying we can do this in our own strength. It is so vital that we as Christians don't get cocky and we don't get sloppy. When we've had big successes, we must say no to resting on our loyals, our past accomplishments. And even Christians can slip into this deception. You see, pride which is so deep into our culture. There's even parades celebrating how proud we are. It's actually, pride is about stealing God's glory. When's the last time you've seen a thankfulness parade and everybody starts marching and giving God the glory? That, that happens, but not too often. Yes, success can cause us to say, look at us, aren't we amazing? It's very easy in our excitement about breakthroughs to forget to give God the glory. This morning, I woke up from a dream, and in the dream, I was singing one of Jenny Clenner's favorite songs, Gloria. It was amazing. And I was singing it over some people who are going through hard times. And here I wake up. I don't usually remember my dreams. When God enables us as the All Saints community this December to purchase the church building at Crescent Beach, Let's make sure that Jesus gets the glory for this miraculous breakthrough. It's not something we can do in our own strength. I firmly believe God is going to give us the church building at Crescent Beach. But, you know, God loves to do it through ordinary people just like me and you. God, he loves to use little boys with two loaves and five fish. And each of us in the Oikos Project, if we bring our two loaves and five fish, 
we can be part of the miracle with the Oikos Project. As I mentioned, joy comes from identity, not activity. Our joy is to be from our identity in Christ. We're, we're called into being, not doing. As Bishop Peter once said, we're called to be human beings, not human doings. Now look with me in your Bibles at verse 18. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Here's my question. Was Jesus referring to past, present, or future? And my hunch is the answer is yes to all three. Satan is not a mythical Halloween cartoon character. Satan is real. He doesn't have a pitchfork and a red suit and horns. Rather, he disguises himself as an angel of light. The Bible teaches he was the former leader of the heavenly choir and he was thrown out like lightning from heaven in ancient history because out of pride and jealousy he sought God's throne. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 and also the book of Revelation talk about this tragedy where Satan led one-third of the angels to rebel against God. The good news is two-thirds of the angels are still working on God's side, but one-third are out to kill, steal, and destroy, particularly at Halloween. Now, I want to mention, because wherever you go, you see ghosts at Halloween. Ghosts, by the way, are not dead people. They're rather demons or fallen angels that often <coughs> disguise themselves as your dead relative. Demons love to trick grieving vulnerable people into going to seances and talking to their so-called dead ancestors when it's not their ancestors at all. We rejoice that Satan's power was thrown down in Jesus' death and resurrection. Everything is rooted in what happened on Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Secondly, in the present tense, Satan's power is thrown down like lightning whenever people are saved, healed, delivered, and transformed. And you can see Jesus alluding because the 72 had just been doing that. And thirdly, from the future, said the end time since Satan's power will be fully cast down like lightning when Jesus returns. You ask me, when is he returning? The answer is, no one knows, but we've got to be ready. Now, Jesus amazingly told the 72 in verse 19, and therefore to the rest of us, he said, I have given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm you. I woke up two nights ago and I was dreaming. And I kept hearing in my dream, I have given you authority. I have given you authority. 
I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And as I was listening to my dream, I realized it's Jesus who gives us the authority. And he's got the authority to give us the authority because Matthew 28, 19 says, he's been given all authority. Jesus is fully God, the Son, in the amazing trinity. Dr. Daryl Johnson, who was our speaker at the recent online Anglican Summit, he's an amazing teacher. He taught us that the word authority in the Greek means literally exercise, it means out of one's being. So it's not something external. It's very rooted. The Strong's uh, book says that authority is privilege, force, capacity, competency, freedom, or mastery. And Jesus, he gives us this authority to each of us. We've been given authority at Halloween over ghosts, demons, and witches. Now, have you noticed that these smiling, demonic Halloween characters are always portrayed, particularly in the media, as fun, pretend, and harmless? They're almost cute. That they portray them very often as childlike and playful. Oh, how many of you, like I did, cut your teeth on Casper the Friendly Ghost, the cartoons, or Samantha the so-called Good Witch in the TV series Bewitched, or his friend Hot Stuff the Friendly Smiling Devil. Bishop Peter tells me that in Australia, Halloween hadn't caught on. Like in Canada, I think we're heavily influenced by America TV. But I want to say, don't let the cute smiles at Halloween, oh, the ghosts, the demons, and the witches, trick you. Jesus here refers to crushing uh, snakes and scorpions. He's alluding to Genesis chapter 3, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and Psalm 91. Genesis 3.15, God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He, that's referring to the Messiah, Jesus, will crush your head, and you, the snake, will strike his heel. And that's referring to the crucifixion. In Deuteronomy 8.15, the Bible teaches uh, God has led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with it's venomous snakes and scorpions who spent 40 days in the wilderness. Who would have known all about snakes and scorpions and wolves but Jesus himself? In Psalm 91, verse 13, God tells us, You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. So, you see, the Jewish people, they knew their Bibles, unlike much of our culture. So Jesus could make a reference. They'd immediately know what he's talking about. Now, the rest of verse 18, part B, he says, <clears throat> not only over scorpions and serpents, but also to overcome, does he say, some of the power of the enemy? Does he say most of the power of the enemy? You're not answering. I'm asking you a question. No, he says 
all the power. Isn't that good news at Halloween? That no matter how smiling and tricky the ghost demons and witches get, we have been given authority and power, dunamis, dynamite, over all the power of evil. Now, Flip Wilson, I mean, remember Flip Wilson from Laugh-In? He used to go around, but he said, the devil made me do it. But he was wrong. <clears throat> the devil doesn't make us do it. Each one of us, as the 72, we've been given authority over all the power of the enemy. The devil can't make you do anything unless you give in to the power of the flesh, which is selfishness, and the power of the world, which is peer pressure. So I want to challenge us to trample on these generational strongholds that we all have of disappointment, fear, discouragement, frustration, self-pity, self-condemnation, anger, bitterness, or loneliness. Many of our poor choices, particularly in these isolating COVID times, they come from how we deal with the pain of loneliness. And there's loneliness is an epidemic in COVID times. In a time where hugging is virtually banned, many people feel deeply alone. They often default to their childhood dates that no one really loves them or cares them, not even God. And in Jesus' name, I want you to agree with me, we break the lies that you may believe that you are stupid, ugly, or weak. We break the power of those curses that may have been spoken over you by boys in elementary or high school. This truth, it was affirmed by the Apostle Paul in Romans 16 verse 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Now, speaking of feet, what's the footwear we're supposed to wear according to Ephesians 6? It's the gospel shoes of peace. And we need to wear them, especially at Halloween. How are we going to get victory at Halloween over ghosts, demons, or witches? Is it by being bad-tempered, angry, aggressive, or belligerent, like some Christians do? No, it isn't. Our victory over the tricky Halloween evil is by calmly and peacefully treading upon serpents and scorpions under our feet of shalom. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers with shoes of peace, for they shall be called children of God, children of God. That's about identity, isn't it? Now, please move with me to verse 20. In verse 20, Jesus said, Don't rejoice that the spirits, the demons, submit to you, but rather rejoice that your name is written in the book of heaven, in heaven. And sometimes, you know, we've heard this so many times, we take it for granted. It doesn't particularly grip us. I want to ask you, how joyful are you at this moment about that amazing truth? Or are you just sort of used to it? You see, when Jesus said your name is referring to identity, we live in an age of huge identity crisis and identity politics. The very newcomer word, Soji, which we hear all about in the news, it leads many to assume that our identity comes from our gender or sexuality. But Jesus says, where does our identity come from? It comes from being an adopted child of God. I'm asking, where are you getting your joy from at this moment? We move on to conclude verse 21 to 24. Jesus does a profound teaching that could be a, 
a whole other sermon, but I won't go there. But he teaches that God, who is Trinitarian, three in one, God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he reveals himself to who? As we said, the humble and the childlike. As we mentioned, God resists who? He resists the proud, the arrogant, the self-sufficient. You see, childlike trust praises God before everything works out. And so with the Oikos project, if we're wise, we'll thank him before we even have moved into the building. We're not going to wait for all the money to come in. Childlike trust, it knows who we belong to, and therefore whose we are. Identity comes from childlike belonging. So I want to conclude by asking you, who do you belong to? Secondly, who are you trusting in? And thirdly, who are you rejoicing in? I want to ask you to pray with me. If you're in agreement, you can repeat after me either out loud or silently. Dear Father, I thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus, for us. I thank you that Jesus is an amazing gift that we don't deserve. And I ask, Father, that you will take from me pride, arrogance, and self-sufficiency. Help me not to steal your glory, but to give you glory. Thank you that you have given us authority, especially in Halloween, to trample upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And Lord, right now I receive that authority by faith that you've given me. I'm not going to live in deception. And I break off myself any generational curses, any false beliefs that I am unfixable, that I am unforgivable, that I have no future, that there is no point, that I might as well give up. Lord, I choose to believe, as you said, that I am a child of God, and my name is written in the book. And so, Lord, I surrender afresh to your Lordship. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with true joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning. I'm going to say some prayers now. First, we'd like to thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us. We thank you for loving us and forgiving us. We thank you for your precious blood that protects us, especially in this time of Halloween when things get strange. And now, if you would like to add your own thanksgivings, I'll pause for a moment. So we're going to say the liturgy now, prayer liturgy, and I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and then you respond with, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we commend to you our Queen, Elizabeth. We pray that you will fill her with the grace of your Holy Spirit, that she may always lean on your will and walk in your ways. We also commend to you this nation of Canada and her leaders. 
We pray for humble leaders that admit their mistakes and pray for forgiveness. We pray for truth and reconciliation in our government, our legislature, and city councils. And we pray right now, Lord, for the election in BC. We pray that it would be an honorable one and a peaceful one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the mission you have sent us on to share your love and to tell your story. We pray blessings on the Old Coast Project. Thank you for the opportunities you have given us this week to speak of your love and your salvation. We now name our friends, neighbors, and family members who are in need of your grace and salvation. And at this point, you can say out loud now or in your hearts the names of people you know that need this prayer. May saving faith rise in their hearts. Empower your people with your Holy Spirit and help them to be bold and loving witnesses for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you told us to come boldly before your throne of grace and receive mercy and help in our time of need. We rejoice that you sacrificed your body on the cross and rose again so that we can go to heaven with you. Thank you that we can have healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift to you right now those who are struggling and need prayer in body, mind, and spirit. They need your healing, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, through your precious blood that you can heal us. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our closest companion, we thank you for the consolation of friendship and fellowship, for the blessings of family and for the family of God. We thank you for assurance that we do not walk the road alone and have our community at All Saints making good pilgrimage together through this life and towards the eternal city. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. How blessed we are to, call, to be called your children, Lord Jesus. How blessed we are to be adopted into your family. Blessed be your name, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Ed and Janice, for preaching the word and for praying for us. We've done warfare. We've prayed. We've read scripture. We have heard the sermon being preached and we've prayed for our community, Time for the Peace. Can I ask you to please stand? And so I say to you, the peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. This is a time when we really need God's peace. So I pray if you're on your own, give yourself a hug. Remember that we're with you, at least in spirit, if we can't be physically with you. One day we'll be with you. But peace with you, and if you're with family, share that peace with your family. Peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody. Be seated. I've got some announcements to share with you now. Uh, don't forget, as usual, our Zoom coffee shop every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Please come and join us. This is a way of keeping relationship going. It's not ideal. We're not physically in a coffee shop but at least we can be relational, catch up with each other, no agenda, just a visit, have coffee together every Tuesday, 7 p.m. We've just completed our push prayer and fasting vigil for the last eight days. And so this Thursday, we're back to regular push prayer every Thursday night, 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. And uh, we pray for you and the community and we want to encourage you to come and join us Thursdays at 7 p.m. Don't forget, uh, this month we're collecting the Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. They are ready to be picked up. If you would like them delivered to your home, please let us know and we'll drop them off. If you would like to pick them up, you can pick them up from our house. If you want to fill out a shoe box online, you can do that at the Samaritan, Samaritan's Purse website. So either way, let's contribute to the children of the world this Christmas as we participate in this shoe box ministry. Now, as I said to you earlier, next Sunday is going to be 
All Saints Day. We remember all the saints of God, those who've lived and gone before us, those who are alive today and those who are still yet to come. We don't worry about Halloween. We worry and not worry, but we praise the Lord for all the saints. So come and, and um, celebrate with us next Sunday on All Saints Day, and that's the day that our church was named as well, All Saints Day. Then remember, on the 8th of November, the following Sunday, we're going to have a Remembrance Day service where we honour the military and those that have gone before us um, fighting in battles and war and uh, bringing democracy to our countries. On the... Um, 15th of November, we're going to have our community lunch, so please come and join us. We're having um, a community lunch together. Everybody's welcome, 12.30 on Sunday the 15th after church. And then the following Sunday, um, the 22nd of November, is actually the last Sunday of the ecclesiastical year, and it's Christ, we call it Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday before we go into Advent. And so um, we want you to come and join us because Reverend Dr. Ed Hurdle will be preaching again on the 22nd of November. And we're going to attempt to have a healing service. We're going to pray for your healing. If you need prayer and if you need healing, on, particularly on that day, we're going to anoint you with holy anointing oil. Ed's going to preach a sermon um, from Luke chapter 10 again, pouring healing oil on your neighbor's wounds. And we're going to pray for healing and we're going to expect God to do some amazing miracles. So they're the next uh, few Sundays coming up. We look, we look forward to having you join us as we worship together towards the end of the ecclesiastical year. And finally, a quick note to remind you that next Sunday is going to be the first Sunday of the month. Can you believe it? November is already upon us. And we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries on the first Sunday of every month. We pray for you and your birthdays and anniversaries. So send in your birthday details or your anniversary details and we'll be praying for you. Okay, it's time to give thanks to God for our offering. So why don't we stand at the offering baskets and thank God. I want to uh, remind you, as I do every Sunday, that you can send your offerings and tithes into the church. Um, you can send them by check, All Saints Community Church, P.O. Box 75068 White Rock in Surrey, B.C., V4A0B1. You can send in e-transfers online. Go to our website, allsaintswhiterock.com. And um, if you want to make a donation to our project Oikos, we're trying to buy this building in Crescent Beach and we're raising $300 million as of today. $3 million. Uh, $3, $3 million, <laughs> beg your pardon. Thank you, Jenny. $3 million. Uh, we have $200,000 already raised just from our local community and we've got some donors coming in to bring in some larger amounts. You can also give money, if you live in the States, you can give money to our Anglican mission in the US. The... Um, Send uh, a check to the New Covenant Anglican Church, attention Bishop Buffington, 800 Tuscawilla Road, Winter Springs, Florida, 32708, and you will receive a tax receipt for that. So don't forget, just before we pray, um, here's our target, $3 million by the end of December, and we need everybody to give and everyone to give sacrificially. This is a big step for us, but we believe God is leading us in this. And we want to not only provide a church for the next generation, we want to save the church building. So please help us. If you've got any further questions, don't hesitate to ask. Let's pray for our offering. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We pray for the money that's already come in for Project Oikos and for the money that's come into our tithes and offerings. And we pray your blessing on this and our journey of faith as we move towards $3 million to purchase this property. Thank you for your faithfulness. And I pray, Father God, that we will meet people who are generous, who will make this project come to life. And we ask your blessing on us now in Jesus' name and all these gifts. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. 
Well, thank you. Let's uh, set up for communion. One of the great privileges that we have is to be able to have communion at home while you're at home. So you set up your communion set. I'll set up our communion set and we'll share communion together. Let's do that now. Okay, church, are we ready? This is, this is the focal part of the service for us. Reading, singing, praying, preaching, and then this. This is what brings us together. And so I say to you, lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. Lord our God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. We thank you that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you and set us free to love and serve one another. Lord our God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, share his body and his blood. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. He gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. And he shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we respond with this anti-Halloween statement as we say together, Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. You better believe that. Here's the miracle. You're at home. We're here in the underground church. But we who are many are actually one body, for, for we, we all, all share, share in the one, one bread. bread. Lord, you taught us to hope for salvation, the joy of every longing heart. And so we pray for the coming of your kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us as we pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done. done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. And so I say to you, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Well, you share communion with your family at home. If you're on your own, you share communion um, with us. We're doing this together. We're one body. Let's do that now. Jenny, the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you.
Well, let's ask Jenny to come and lead us in another communion song, another warfare song. Let's sing together. One of Satan's favorite things to do is to be the accuser of the brethren. The Lord does convict us, but he convicts us so that we'll come to him and leave our sin. The enemy will sh wag his finger at us and say, shame on you. Run and hide from God. Who do you think you are? That's the way you can tell the difference. The Lord gently corrects us that we will go to him. So what thoughts have been coming to you? Ones that make you run from the living God or ones that make you run to the living God? Let's be sent out now. Can we do that? Um, I'll say the first part of the prayer and then you join us. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. And together we pray. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us in this hope we have grasped, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Amen. We'll say the blessing at the foot of the cross. So I'm going to ask you to please stand. And I say to you, 
All our problems, we, we send, send to, the, to cross the cross of Christ. Of Christ. All our difficulties, we, we send, send to the cross of Christ. And this Halloween, what are you going to do about all the devil's works? We, we send, send to, to the, the cross, cross of Christ, Christ and all our hopes. We, we set, set on, the on the risen Christ. Christ. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for being at church today. Um, can I remind you um, the notes that I took while Ed was preaching today? The three significant questions he left for us at the end. Who do you belong to? Who are you trusting in and who are you rejoicing in? I pray that you'll be able to trample on snakes and scorpions this Halloween, that you will belong, understand you belong to Jesus, that you are trusting in him and you're rejoicing in God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let me give you the blessing as we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Come on, Jenny, come and sing our final warfare song. Oh, I just have to preface this so you get a context. This is sort of reminiscent of the children of Israel. They've left Egypt. They didn't want to go into the promised land because they were a little bit scared and intimidated quite a lot. And so disobedient in going into the promised land, like the Lord said, I want you to go there. So they had to travel for 40 years in the desert. And then... Now they're going in. They're like, okay, we're going in. Um, and so that's what this is talking about. We're, we'll enter the land. It's like enter the promised land that the Lord has promised to us and all that he um, wants to give us and all he has given us that actually belongs to us that the enemy wants to intimidate and say, no, you can't have this. Be afraid, be very afraid. So let's sing, The Battle Belongs to the Lord.
thanks to the Lord. Well, thank you for being at church today. Tell your friends what you've done. As you remain standing, I say to you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. See you next week, All Saints Day, next Sunday. We look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Thanks for being here today.